And Captain Josh killed it today with some Monster Kings. Who did? It launched up. These guys got eats. All this, this whole strip right here is oil. This is where they store it all. Ooh. Up in here, this thing, when you cook this, it, it's, it turns white because there's so much oil in there. What do you do different with a pink salmon? But salmon do. You want to scoop all that out. Hey, this is Captain Josh. He was a lead flare at a lodge up here in Sitka, Alaska for three years. And he's going to show you what he just did. Made quick work out of all these fish. Carnage. Here's the four different types of salmon. We got a king or a chinook, a coho or a silver, a chum or a dog salmon, and a pink or a humpy. All right guys, we're out here with Troop 10 from Michigan. And we caught a bunch of fish. We got some really nice king salmon to clean here. Five of them, two of them are over 30. Captain Josh is gonna show you how it's done. Start with the little one. Um, yeah. Get warmed up. This one you're gonna do with a two cut method, right? Yeah. Oh, they're all gonna be two cut method, just to go a little deeper on the big ones. So, yeah, I, I don't go all the way to the pin bones. So right here I popped all the pin bones. So that opens it up. Oh, it's a bit of a white king. There we go. King salmon. Delicacy. I don't think it's quite a white, but it's a light one. Yeah, I think these lighter ones have a higher oil content in them. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's what makes them fatty and oily. Mm hmm. Well, you're going to go home for the next couple of days. I <laughs> know. All right. Make way for the big boys. Make way. Man, those are awesome looking fish. Yeah. Mike, see the one we got, we were saying was huge. Mike, take a picture of me holding the two of them up. Yeah, yeah that's a good picture. So this is how to clean a big king salmon. Beautiful. That's like pumpkin orange. It looks like a pumpkin swordfish almost. So it's harder to go all the way up to the pin bones on that because there's a lot more meat. So you're just there. going up to them on the first cut? I just go just inside of the body so that I don't disturb anything on the way through. Just because there's so much more meat to go through. Mm -hmm. So then when I come back here, I can use my knife to make one smooth cut here, all the popping bones. Mm -hmm. And it opens up nice. And it's just one shot through. Nice. Bags of fillets and this big bag. Let's chunk them up. Okay. clean that one up Hey, what was that? What, what size is it? Is it a big size? <laughs> <laughs> mm. a little trimming on this one. Got some backbone. That's right. That's right. The size of a big fish. You know what the world record was working? Sport caught? 92 pounds. Wow. It's either 92 or 94. I think it was caught in the Kenai River. I think. Don't quote me though. Okay. But oh, that's a serious commercial guys up here used to get like hundred some pounders. Really? There was a run of fish that would go way up into Canada, so they had to get crazy big so they could make the journey. They needed to be able to store enough. But then in like the 1950s and 60s, they introduced dams on like the Columbia River and some certain other ones, and it dried up their their tributaries that they would make it into. Okay. So there wasn't 
there wasn't any reason for them to go there, so they right. couldn't grow as big, or they didn't need to. They had to switch up their whatever genetic plan, so be it. You're gonna trim that later, or just that one. bone come this way same thing along the backbone right through now I know that I'm good <laughs> that's a big fish so nice. now you're gonna come back now I'm access I have access to the spine right now where those pin bones start mm -hmm. so I can just draw one line pop them all, and it's opened up nice. It avoids that. Now that your pin bones are popped, it's just a nice yep. clean swipe of meat. It's a matter. And these bones in the ribs, you pop those later? These you have to leave in because if you take take these out, you're just gonna screw up all your meat. So you just cook the fish with the bone in. Okay, but yeah. just this part right down here? There's no bones left here. These okay. are all gone. Okay. They're all, they all start like right at the top of this line mm -hmm. and they go up. They would go up, the ribs would come, they hang over and they touch down. This is like the fat layer. But this belly's all good to eat. This is all good to eat, no bone in here. Cool. Just a nice line on the backbone. Do some people pull the pin bones with tweezers? Maybe. Do they pull each one? Most of the time you just get them whenever you're eating. Yeah, they just flake open so nice that you just pick around them anyways. Yeah. And if you miss them, you just feel them in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. That one should be pretty good. Beautiful. Oh God. Oh my God. So $40 a pound, that's over $1,000 worth of fish, easy. You might have close to 100 pounds of meat there. That might be like four grand worth of salmon. Yeah, when we added your king there. <laughs> Barely get my knife through. Meat shot! So yeah guys, these kings from Sitka are some of the best eating salmon in the world. you gotta collar and belly them because that's just too big of a slab of meat so collar it take the belly are you keeping that collar yeah that's good meat right there oh yeah all this this whole strip right here is oil this is where they store it all Ooh. up in here this thing when you cook this it it's it turns white because there's so much oil in there because they store so much in there Dips. this is like the best eating part Dips. collars and bellies are money Josh, do you guys want any fish? You guys got fish what? I'm alright. 
You know it's a good day when you gotta belly most of your kings. Because <laughs> they're just too big to get in the bag. So this one I'm just gonna take and just trim that little backbone. Alright, so yeah. Oh, I can find it. Me and my girlfriend loading up my bag as best I can. Stop. We should uh we should send some guys down here to okay. Yeah. This is the two cut method on a coho. That's it. And you got to worry about pin bones. Uh, they're in there, but you can't remove. Them. Ready? Yep. So that pops all the pin bones, opens it up. You get it over the rib cage. Just one straight cut. So that's the two cut method. You just get straight butter. Nice. Right there. See how the meat's more orange? Yeah, we caught. Meat's more orange on a chum. Yeah. Sometimes you get a red one, but the red ones will be the call. This will be the chum. See how it's a little more orange? Okay. Still a good eating fish. All right, guys, we just showed you how to clean uh, king salmon and coho salmon. Right here, we have a pink salmon. And these are actually typically the worst tasting salmon, but if you got a fresh one, it's not bad. So, what do you do different with a pink salmon? You really don't gut these, we leave them whole. So all you have to do, you end up leaving the bones in, but it's just the method we do. Just cut down to the backbone, open up the knife, go right through everything. This is how they commercially fillet them. You see what that fillet looks like. And what happens if you, they're good fresh, but what happens if they get the, frozen? There's an enzyme in them that releases. So I'm just gonna open up this side so I get my knife started. If I can. So for long-term storage, an enzyme releases. And it just turns the meat to mush. This is un, not very desirable. Okay, interesting. Yeah, normally we gut and gill them right away, bleed them out. Commercially though, they don't, that's how they do it. They just hack them off like that. Okay. And they leave everything in. That's, cool. how the, that's how quality I think does it. And sometimes people will take pinks to smoke, but we got a cooler full of them. And this is going to be our halibut bait. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we got it. All right, guys. So this is the salmon we're going to be cleaning. This is a pink salmon. You can tell it's a pink salmon because it's got these ovals on both sides of the tail. I'm going to show you guys how to gut and gill a salmon. The first thing you do whenever you catch a salmon mm -hmm. is you actually want to pull out your fish club. This also has a gaff on it, but this is the fish club that we use. It's actually a commercial fish club. And you want to hit him on top of the head. So you go wham and you hit them really hard on top of the head. At first I thought it was actually inhumane to do that to a fish, but it's actually the nicest thing you can do. It knocks him out and then he doesn't know what's going on after that. So right after that happens, the first thing you do is you actually cut him so that he bleeds out. To cut a fish or to bleed a fish, what you do is you sort of just grab him and you just slice in there all the way until you hit a gill. And sometimes you can actually cut a gill, grab your knife, cut back on him, just like that. And now he'll start to bleed out. That's a good cut. So you hit him on the head, now he's bleeding out. After you, after you bleed him out, you want to give him at least two minutes so that he bleeds out. And then you're going to gut and gill your salmon. To gut and gill your salmon, this is the type of fillet knife that we use. It's got a scoop on one end to 
clean out the bloodline. So I'll show you the gut and gilling process now. So the first thing you do is you take the gills out. To take the gills out, come behind here, kind of cut an oval, just follow on the body. Now that you're all the way up, you got that top gill off. So that's his gills. Normally you just throw those away. And normally you can find the heart sitting right here. Here's a salmon heart. If it's a fresh salmon, it'll still be beating. In this case, it's not still beating. But the next thing you want to do is you want to, you want to gut them. Usually I'll have them down here in this fish tray, but I'm just showing you. So to gut them, it's pretty straightforward. Cut all the way up. There we go. You can see this guy's been eating some herring. This is what was in his stomach. Some herring. That was the stomach that we cut. And then neither it'll have eggs, or in this case, it actually has sperm sacs. So, a funny thing is. I always ask people what these are, and they always say, oh, those are his lungs. But these are actually sperm sacs. If it doesn't have sperm sacs, it'll have eggs. But this is a male, so this is what's going to fertilize the eggs. If they're really close to breeding, they'll have big sperm sacs like this. If they got a long ways to go before they're going to breed, you, you'll hardly be able to see them. But if it doesn't have eggs, then it's a male. But you see this, this is the bloodline. This is what you wanna cut. Cut this out, just like so. Certain fish have it, certain fish don't have a big thick bloodline like this, but salmon do. You wanna scoop all that out. All the way out. And the next thing you can see, it's got some parasites on it. So you always want to scrape these parasites off. Just like so. To rinse it off, we just grab it. This is salt water we're rinsing them with. And there we go. Now he's ready to throw in the cooler and throw on some ice. This one up top's the king. You can tell it's got flat gums. Dots on the tail. This other one's a silver. This one's a chum. You can mostly tell because it's got the big eye. And this one here is a pink or a humpy. If you guys enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to my channel. If you click the notification bell, it'll give you updates for whenever I upload new videos. Thanks for watching guys and good luck fishing. All right guys, we're done halibut fishing and we're gonna feed some birds. Here comes an albatross. <laughs>